Now what you've already heard, what you see going on in this world, we talked earlier during the prayer request about our country, but we also talked about the world and other countries. And Jesus said to, said, or began to say to them, see to it that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and will mislead many. When you hear of wars and rumor of wars, do not be frightened. Those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will also be famines. These things are merely the beginning of birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you to the courts and you will be flogged in the synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them. The gospel must first be preached to all the nations. When they arrest you and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but it is the Holy Spirit Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. He will be saved, the one that endures. As you read this, there's a lot of scary stuff that goes on through that. There's a lot of stuff that really kind of is bothersome to people. And it should be. We should be bothered by it. But that first line there is a pretty big warning that chapter, or verse 3. It's a warning to me and it's a warning to you not to let anybody mislead you. There are so many things out there right now that are very misleading. There's things in the internet that are misleading. I know it shocks people, not everything on the internet is true. But they're misleading in great ways that are misleading us and misleading kids. And we see a lot of Christians turning away from the Word of God and to turning towards what's popular to be said, the popular to be had. I walked into the TV room the other day and the TV had been left on and one of the kids had been watching it and, and so I can't even tell you what the cartoon was that was on but it was just, just, it just started about five minutes earlier so none of them had been watching it so I couldn't, you know, I didn't ask anybody. But there was a lady and she had five kids in this cartoon and she is teaching them about, I, I'm guessing from the talk, it's about Hinduism, would be my guess what it was. Might have been Buddhism. I'm not sure, because I didn't keep it on. But here's a little kid's cartoon, and she's explaining to the kids all the values about this. But for all the little kids that are watching that cartoon, Kids pick things up real quick. They do. They pick up the things that are said, the things that are done. And so it's just a little bit of influence trying to mislead those kids into a false religion. Into a false way of life that leads to hell. But we as adults, we would never fall for anything like that, would we? Well, sad 
to say, and I think it's called five, but I'm not sure, B-I-A-P, B-I-A-T-H, or B-I-P-H. But there's now a, a very strong, and it's, it's become a growing religion that states we include everybody. We include the Christians. We include the Mormons. We include the Muslims. We include anybody and everybody. Because there's all different ways to God. There's all these different things we can do to get to God. And it is one of the fastest growing religions that there are right now. Because everybody can believe what they want. And you go to heaven. They're misleading people. They're misleading educated people. You would think educated people, would, you know, we really look at educated people a little bit and we think, man, you know, but sometimes that education is really misleading them. So far away. They're misleading people off the streets. You know, we all know who Jimmy Jones is. Now, Jimmy Jones' ministry actually started as a pastor. And he was reaching out to the street people. And he, he started out by not intending to end up where he ended up. He thought he was doing a good job trying to get people off the streets. And because he was so successful and so drawn in by bringing everybody in off the streets that he started to think he was the one doing it. And he went from having a heart to try and help people out to having a heart that claimed he was the Savior. And ended up leaving over 900 people at their deaths. But many of those who got involved with him after that, after the street people, some of the ones who were in his ministry were educated people. People get misled so easy and drawn in so easy. And we say, yeah, we wouldn't get drawn into the call. No, but there's little things that we have come to accept in religion that are not in the Word of God, that are not acceptable to the Word of God, that do not agree to the Word of God. You know, most, most Christians agree that, you know, God created the world. And then along came some people who said, no, no, the world was created by evolution. And here's, here's all our proof of this theory of evolution, <coughs> that this world was created this way. And... You know, it used to be a law in the United States, you could not teach evolution. Did you know that? You could go to jail for teaching evolution. And that's really what the Scopes trial was about, was they were trying to teach evolution. And it was against the law. And so, Christians said, no, no, God created the world. But then those kids were being taught they started growing up. They were in their 20s and 30s and 40s, and they were trying to make sense of all we've been taught about evolution in the schools. And then our parents are teaching us about Christianity over here and God created. So now in a lot of churches and a lot of Christians believe that God created through evolution, which is not compatible to God's word. Amen. It doesn't fit. But people are trying to fit God's Word and man's Word and bring it together somehow. And say, well, you know, couldn't have been seven days, so, you know, must have been 700 million years. That's not what it reads. God's Word is how it reads. 
very clear, and you can turn back to the start of it. He says, and then there was evening, and then there was morning, second day. He said, then there was a hundred million mornings, or a thousand mornings, or anything. He said, there was an evening and a morning, and the second day. And then the third day. And he went through it. But we try to adjust things. There's a, a man who, uh, you know, many others thought was a strong Christian. I'm not here to judge him, so I'm not going to say what he was. But I will judge what he said because he had a relative, a close relative, who had started a homosexual movement to reach the gospel out to homosexuals saying it's perfectly good to be homosexual. That the Bible was wrong. It was outdated. Those areas of the Bible were outdated. And so he was, quote, bringing many into his revivals that he was having. And this man said, well, yeah, I believe the Bible, except for this part. He said, that part's not true. So he's teaching people that you can take a part of the Bible out and not accept it. Because this person over here, he's a good person. So I know he couldn't be wrong. You either accept the whole of God's word or you can't accept anything. You can't pick and choose what you want. None of us can. Now, having said that, it doesn't mean that I have a right to condemn the homosexuals. But I do have the right to say homosexuality is a sin. Because all I'm doing is preaching God's word. Homosexuality is a sin in God's word. That's what he says. That's what I believe. And to teach other than that is against God's word. But we've got denominations now that are changing their stands on it. We've seen it many times on many different issues. I'm just bringing up a couple of the popular ones now that are really misleading people. Because if Satan can get us just a little bit off that mark, then the ones that we're teaching are a long ways off that mark. And it's scary 20 to 30 years from now what people will be believing because of what's being told right now and being taught in schools 20, 30 years down the way. That's what these kids are going to be raised with, believe. And it dilutes God's Word. And then people stray away from God's Word because they don't know how to make it compatible to what the world's teaching. And that's why the first thing out of Jesus' mouth here is, see to it that no one misleads you. Go to God's Word. Any question about anything, go to God's Word. It is clear. It doesn't beat around the bush. It's not outdated. It's very clear. God is the same today, yesterday, and since before the creation ever started. And he will be the same after this world is done and gone. He is still the same. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and will lead, mislead many. When you hear of wars and rumors of war, do not be frightened. Those things must take place. But that is yet, not yet, the end. Now, we have heard wars and rumors of war since I have been born. I, I was born after World War II. And my parents told me that a lot of people thought World War II was going to be war to end all. You know, that was going to be Armageddon. That's where it would lead. Now it's what, 70, 80 years old? Yeah, close to that. Somewhere in there. And ever since then, we've had a lot of wars going on all around the world. Now it's in the Ukraine. We're in war in Ukraine. It's going on. But that doesn't mean the war is, that, you know, this is the end of the world. For na 
nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in different places, in various places. There will also be famines. These things are merely the beginning of the birth pain. So we're seeing things going on that are leading towards the end. Doesn't mean it's the end, and I will never believe the end. Because God's the only one that knows. He makes that clear in his word. No man knows. But he does give us clues of what we're supposed to be listening for, what we're supposed to be listening, doing about. But then he goes and says, But be on your guard, for they will deliver you to the courts, and you will be flogged in the synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them. We will run into issues. We will run into problems. We will run into times when we're not popular. Christianity will not be popular. And when you're starting to see that in our country, and we're worried about our rights, what's going to happen? You now we have the right to this and the right to that. Those rights are slowly being taken away. You look at the difference in our rights between now, back to 1950, right after World War II. Big change, has Look at the rights that have changed just in the last 20 years. Things have changed. And we're going to see it get worse and worse. Are you ready? Are your kids ready? Are your grandkids ready? We need to be. The end is coming. It's not very far off. We don't know if it'll be in our lifetime. We don't know if it'll be in the lifetime of our kids or our grandkids. But we need to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to make sure that the gospel, that our grandkids, that the next generation, <laughs> generation after that. Maybe you say, I don't have any kids. Well, you've got ability to teach kids. You've got ability to make sure that those kids in your church family are hearing the proper things. And when there are questions about what they hear in the school or on the internet or anywhere where it's against God's word, that you be the one that will straighten them out, not depend on somebody else to do it. But you take a stand, take a firm stand on God's word and God's word alone. No, we're going to become hating people. Verse 13 said, you will be hated by all because of my name. But even through that hate, we've got to show the love of Jesus Christ. So be ready. Be prepared. How do you be prepared? Spend time in God's word. Spend time praying to God. And then going back to his word. If most of your influence comes off the word of the computer off the word, the TV, off the word, the neighbors, the politicians, or the school systems. Now, I'm not knocking school teachers at all, don't get me wrong, but a lot of what's taught in school is not biblical. A lot of what kids talk about in school, kids teaching kids, is wrong. So you might make 100% sure what your kids and your grandkids are hearing is the truth. By, by kids, I mean kids in the church. We've got a lot of kids in this church. And we need to be helping those parents make sure that the truth is being told. Because those are our future generations of Christians. That's powerful. There, my Father, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you and I praise you for your word, for your allowing us to come to you in prayer, for allowing us salvation. Your word says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man 